Oke, okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'd like to have the third presenter in our keynote speaker presentation session. So, I'd like to invite uh, doc, uh, Associate Professor, Dr. I guess it's already here. <laughs> I just wondering if I'm uh, call you in the correct name. So, please, take, <laughs> please wait. Uh, I will check uh, your name correctly. Uh, from Malaysia, how are you, Doctor? Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ya. Bersama Cina di Associate Professor. Ya, Profes Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Rasdi bin Zaini. Thank you very much for joining us now. And uh, please prepare your um screen uh, share. Uh, meanwhile, I'd like to introduce to the participants or everyone now in our Zoom room the short uh, curriculum vitae of our presenter. Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Rasdi bin Zaini from University Technology Mara, Malaysia, uh, was uh, uh, working recently as a Dean uh, of Faculty of Plantation and Agrotechnology, UITM Malaysia. And before, Uh, the Dr. Prof. Rasdi bin Zaini was Deputy Dean Student Affairs since 2014 until 2016, then Assistant Rector from 2018-2020. Uh, publication of uh, Dr. Rasdi bin Zaini, many, and in our list, uh, the recent publication about susceptibility and resistance of different host varieties of oil palm and coconut farm toward past rhinoceros beetle. Uh, because uh, since undergraduate, the uh, associate professor Dr. Muhammad Rasdi Zaini working with plantation technology and management, crop protection, and recently for uh, his PhD, agriculture entomology. I'm also working in entomology, doctor. So I'm waiting for the next collaboration among us and between our university in the future. Okay, uh, this is uh, the time for presentation first, as uh, I informed before uh, to other participants and other speakers also. We will have uh, the keynote speaker presentation about 20 minutes around that. And after that, we will have a uh, discussion. To uh, Dr. Ras Dizaini, the time is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, MC, for a very kind introduction. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, and uh, first of all, distinguished guests, uh, participants, uh, of course, uh, our speakers just now, keynote speakers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is a great honor for me to deliver on behalf uh, of the Faculty uh, University Technology Mara a keynote speech at this very important conference. Uh, I would like to first congratulate to the uh, Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Universitas Andalas, Padang, Indonesia, uh, especially the organizing committee of International Conference uh, on Sustainable Agriculture and Biosystem 2020 for the excellent arrangement for this conference and for the assistance. Uh, first of all, this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, following the conference teams today, uh, I will share with you my insight on the biodiversity uh, and crop protection, which is uh, closely related to my area of expertise and the works that have been uh, carried out by uh, our team uh, at the Faculty of Plantation and, Agro and Agrotechnology, University Technology Mara. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, world population is expected uh, to grow uh, to nearly 10 billion people in 2050. So the demand for food will be 60% uh, greater than it is today. Uh, with the farmable land uh, quickly decrease, keeping up with the increasing food demands is a challenge and in need in solution. 
driven by changing environmental conditions, uh, pests are spreading to places uh, where uh, we don't think that, that they have been uh, they have been uh, they have never been before, whether from insects, uh, weeds, or disease. Crops are under threat, uh, and traditional ways of protection are becoming less effective. Uh, feeding a growing population has come at a cost. Uh, uh, therefore, pesticide, uh, for example, pesticide runoff, uh, water intensive crops, uh, and petrochemical based fertilizer all take uh, a toll on the health of the people and planet. Uh, so, this is the general solution that uh, we are already know. For example, uh, here, uh, in this case, we need relevant and effective solutions to protect our food. Healthier and sustainable tools are now uh, must have solution for the future of food. Therefore, crop protection has become one of the important areas for a better food now and in the future. While protecting crops is essential, it is important to ensure that control is safe and effective uh, to reduce the risk of water pollution and help preserve biodiversity. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is general, intro, uh, general definition. Crop protection is the science uh, and practice of managing plant disease, weeds, and other pests, including uh, both invertebrate, vertebrate and invertebrate that damage agriculture, crops, and forestry. Uh, according to Bayer, crop protection is the collection of tools, uh, products, and practices farmers use to defend their crops against uh, weeds, disease, uh, and harmful insect and fungi. Uh, this pest which raw plants of water, sunlight, and nutrients I can have a devastating impact on food production. I think that one is uh, clearly mentioned by our first speaker just now. Uh, farmers around the world uh, make multiple decisions uh, each season on how best to protect their crops. The crops in field are exposed to many factors and may be damaged by pests, uh, including insects, uh, birds, rodents, bacteria, uh, and etc. Fortunately, advances in modern agriculture provide a variety of solutions. Uh, later on, I will uh, explain in details, and specifically in my previous study. So for general, generally, crop protection encompasses of uh, pesticide-based approaches such as herbicides, insecticides, uh, and fungicide. Uh, in the aspect uh, of biological pest control uh, approaches, such as cover crops, trap crops, uh, bitter bank, and so many more. So, uh, for the culture control, uh, for example, barrier based approaches such as agro textile and bird netting, and the next is animal psychological, psychology, uh, psychology based approaches such as bird scarer. And then in terms of uh, technology, uh, we're talking about biotechnology-based approaches such as plant breeding uh, and, and genetic modification. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for in the aspect of biodiversity, we go, uh, we can look uh, advantages and disadvantages of biodiversity. Uh, I think for biodiversity brings the good and the bad, benefit and challenges. Uh, benefits to agriculture, uh, including, for example, insect pollination. However, pests, pathogens, weeds are responsible for annual losses. Uh, I think it's uh, ranging from 26 to 40 percent of the world potential crop production. And uh, endless number of mostly small and often uh, organism such as bees, uh, earthworm, uh, and soil microbe make much of, uh, of our agriculture possible. Many of the organisms that live on the earth okay, 
or move through farm uh, help to keep soil healthy or pollinate crop. However, insufficient management of potential pests uh, poses risk to agriculture productivity and human health. In the event of a pest threat and where no appropriate substitute to the use of pesticide exists, a farmer may use pesticide to protect their crops. Uh, excessive use and misuse of pesticide result in contamination of surrounding soil uh, and water sources, uh, causing loss of biodiversity, destroying beneficial insect population uh, that act as natural enemy of pests and reducing them, as well as reduces, uh, reducing the nutritional value of food. Uh, I think this is uh, uh, general information for the advantages and disadvantages, uh, the presence of biodiversity in our agriculture eco ecosystem. So the question is, how can biodiversity be conserved and enhanced at the same time as improve agriculture productivity? Uh, I raise this question because after this, uh, I will discuss uh, uh, regarding the specific, uh, is different angle uh, how to control pests okay, uh, in different methods. As I mentioned earlier, sustainable method in controlling pests on the plants are highly needed and timely to be considered for benefit of agriculture, industry, uh, as well as humankind. Currently, uh, conventional methods are being selected uh, via cultural, biological, and chemical controls. But uh, among other techniques, chemical control is the most common method to control the pest population. Uh, however, this mean of control is, is difficult to achieve consistently good result uh, due to rapid developments of resistance of pests against the uh, insecticide. Therefore, uh, it's quite unique uh, how to control the insect. Uh, plant chemical defense is one of the potential study uh, should be seriously considered and uh, which can be a potential to be used as an effective way in suppressing pest population. Nevertheless, uh, this technique uh, is currently not widely used uh, and known in the agriculture industry and also lack of field studies uh, pertaining to the uh, plant chemical defense. Uh, so over here, we can see uh, there are some pictures uh, regarding, uh, this is the example, uh, sustainable technique in crop rotation, potential mean of controlling uh, pests, uh, which by triggering plants chemical defense. Uh, to discuss further, I will use example from one of the research output uh, from my previous work. In this study, uh, Solana melongena, or we call it a brinjal plants, uh, in Malay we call it terong, uh, was used as the host plant and two species of pests. Uh, which one? Uh, this is a major pest in, in under green greenhouse or under rain shelter, uh, white fly. The species is Bismicia tabaki and the aphid, uh, aphids classified. This study basically identified the various ecological and, agro, uh, and agronomical conditions, such as pre infestation and nutrient level uh, treatments on the bridge of plants that probably may alter the defense mechanism with emphasis on the plants, insect, and the insect plant re relationship. Okay. So over here, uh, I will show that this is, uh, there are two treatments were involved where the first was plant uh, were early infested by two species of pests, white fly and aphid. Okay, there are two groups of plants will be infested earlier. And the other treatment is uh, brinjal plants were supplied with different level of plant nutrient levels. Okay, this is focusing on the plant's growth performance. And of course, we have control. So this group, there was no insecticide application. All right. Uh, from the observation, 
we confirm that the primary uh, infestation of insect pests manipulate and affect other pest population on brinjal plants, especially at the vegetative stage. Uh, with reference to host plant pest abundance relationship, the study shows that vegetative and fruiting stages of the plants could influence uh, could influence the amount of production of secondary metabolite. They want, especially we focus on flavonoid uh, content, total flavonoid content, and total phenolic content. Okay. The activity of sucking insect pests on brinjal plants has close relationship uh, with TFC and TPC activities uh, by producing secondary metabolizing plant defense mechanism uh, in order to protect themselves from pest attack. The result indicate that phenolic contents in the brinjal plants are higher at the initial stage of plant growth. This was clearly related to the tremendous attack by sucking pests, uh, by uh, sucking insect pests, uh, as I mentioned earlier, white fly, aphid, because there are uh, phloem feeder, phloem feeder and trip during uh, the early plant growth and cause uh, little injury to the plant. These feeding effects actually uh, were perceived as pathogen. And after that, the plants will respond, then they will activate the secondary metabolites, signaling pathways. In addition, some plants could produce plant vol volatiles uh, that create an indirect defense which provides specific use to attract herbivores such as parasites and predators. The result shows that uh, the role of phenolics and plant insect interaction in brinjal plants seems very important in agricultural ecology. Many studies uh, have proven phenolic are among plant constituents that play a very important role in protecting plants from insect pests and uh, mammalian herbivores. So, uh, therefore, a strategy should be formulated while managing insect pests by focusing on effective and low-cost control methods. For instance, uh, optimum dosage of nutrient concentration, right selection of insecticide, optimum frequency, uh, and good timing of insecticide application should be considered. Uh, I think uh, should be considered uh, because while strategizing an IPM of white flying, uh, uh, especially in the early stage of plant growth, should be given uh, highly consideration as they were more susceptible to pest attack. Uh, for the next is. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to, co to conclude, uh, basically plants can defend themselves mechanically and chemically with secondary plants compounds. Uh, many findings from previous empirical studies was uh, notably proven that plants are able to defend themselves using chemical defense through plant secondary metabolites activities. Uh, after the plants have been uh, have been given uh, or have been treated for pest infestation, the secondary metabolite produced by plants uh, give effect to predators also and microbial pathogens, uh, which they serve as repellent uh, and toxin toward herbivores uh, and also microbes, uh, which means that this uh, this is one of the condition. They build a communication among plant and other organisms. Uh, this technique can control uh, pest population effectively and subsequently can minimize the pesticide usage and subsequently prevent chemical residue in the yield, uh, reduce environmental impact, uh, and most importantly, uh, contributing to more sustainable agriculture. Uh, uh, I think that's all. Uh, uh, from me. 
So thank you very much for your kind attention and I hope uh, the seminar will be a great uh, success. So thank you once again. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ras Dizaini. Very interesting for me uh, about the using uh, trigger from PES to improve, uh, to how say, to do next uh, another uh, program or uh, maybe research uh, based on the trigger or maybe intervention of PES uh, to the to this uh, certain plan because in general uh, the PES uh, the farmer will use some cost or considering cost to, to reduce the pest. So it's very interesting. So thank you very much for the presentation. Now I'm already having three of our keynote speaker in our room, uh, Professor Takas Takashi Okayasu, uh, uh, Dr. Desria and Dr. Ras Designing in our room. And also to all the participants, please have your question or other information in our chat room. So we will have uh, some comment or advice or other response from our three uh, very uh, valuable keynote speaker this morning. Okay. Uh, now I have a note. We have a question to uh, Professor Takashi Okayasu. I will check there is from our audience. Uh, the name is Yi Yi because uh, uh, maybe this is the how say uh, uh, used for the conference uh, purpose. So only that I can record in the question room. Uh, to Prof uh, Okayasu, Prof, are you ready with the question? <laughs> Yeah, I, okay. I have uh, already the is, uh, answered the question. Thank you for your nice presentation. Hmm. But uh, ah, you, 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 you read yeah, the question. But and I could not the, catch the, the, the exact uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> opinion of the, this question. But uh, how to reduce the window effect from uh, 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 motion cap, uh, motion sensing, or yes. how to control that uh, window? window inside the greenhouse. I don't know, but the, to reduce the window effect for uh, image sensing. So we take uh, the, we measured or estimate for a plant motion of, of for plant behavior. And then we focus on the several part of the plant body because uh, if window effect, so the plant, for plant, sometimes uh, be be bigger and but uh, the lower part is not moved. So depends on the uh, part of body, plant body. So we can eliminate the window effect from the images. This is, but I did not understand the exact uh, of. of uh, Meaning yeah, of, maybe because uh, 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 I see. Thank you, Prof. Or maybe the question because of the wind sometimes will affect the result of some uh, picture of image. So mm -hmm. maybe that is why uh, Miss or Mister Yi uh, wondering to know. So I guess you answered it already. Then um, I'd like to check in the chat room. There are uh, no other question uh, yeah. to the other. Uh, speakers, but I have many questions. <laughs> what should I do? Professor, uh, before I move to another speakers, um, uh, your, how to say, your research and uh, effort is very uh, praise, uh, praiseful, I guess. And uh, I'm just wondering whether uh, the process by using uh, software, uh, robotic, and also some optical equipment uh, also you use some uh, gaming gaming uh, tools to make uh, or to reduce the the cost because uh, you said that uh, many other um, facility quite expensive so how far it's uh, reduced the cost to the to the application your, uh, your project oh, pardon so final part I yeah, how, how, how reduce uh, the cost uh, by using uh, uh, gaming uh, tools and you how say you, you may yeah. modify some tools uh, is it uh, very helpful or uh, how is going first so gaming sensors and the affordable sensors yeah. so the price is cheap but and then we can use uh, open software and hardwares 
now you can find many softwares. So image uh, libraries, uh, programming softwares also are available in the internet. So you can uh, download and use, and you can apply these uh, softwares and hardwares to improve your measurement. Wow, it's very challenging, I guess, for some, uh, uh, let's say, millennial <laughs> generation. Yeah, if you have uh, any question and if you want to use them, so please contact me. Ah, good. <laughs> we so can share. The committee, <laughs> later, maybe we need some more information or maybe some workshop uh, to share with you to improve the uh, ability of us uh, dealing with your project. Okay, thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and to Dr. Desrial, um, I, I saw in your CV and I forgot to inform that you are also alumni from me university and working in machinery. Maybe you have something to, to inform us uh, dealing with uh, Professor Okayasu and your work. Dr. Desrial, please, uh, the time is for you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, this is very difficult question actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because uh, some so correlation, my, I guess, uh, because uh, you you uh, ever been in Japan yeah. and also you are now working with machinery in Indonesia. Yeah. There is some correlation, I guess, because both of country have also some uh, relationship that very good since long time ago. Uh, maybe you have some idea how to improve the collaboration dealing with uh, uh, your uh, field. Okay, thank study. you very much. Uh, yeah, actually. When I study at Mie University, I study about the crawler uh, type of mm. uh, transporter. Mm -hmm. That's why when I coming back to Indonesia, I continue my study. That's why I try to develop one transporter for fresh fruit bunch of palm oil, the one that I saw you in the presentation. So it was very good uh, experience uh, from me because I could apply uh, what I learned in Japan and I apply the knowledge that I have. And fortunately, the industrial sector in Indonesia, they welcome my uh, new developed uh, transporter. And as I mentioned you before, it is not uh, good only for uh, design or innovation, but it also mm. good for uh, income generating for university because our research uh, should also sustainable. Mm. Without the new income, we cannot uh, make the new design uh, or new innovation. As I mentioned in my presentation, mm. I already made uh, four types of uh, agriculture transporter Mm -hmm. And gradually, every two years, I try to make the, another new one. And this is what I learned from uh, Japan uh, way of thinking about uh, study. We have right. to continue, never, never end. Every time <laughs> right. you make something new and <laughs> learn another yeah, one nice. after you already succeeded with one innovation. Wow. I think, uh, <laughs> wow, very nice. Uh, wow, this is very uh, good, Dr. Desria. <laughs> Gambare bade kiru. I like the Gambare. word. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Gambare maso. I see. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, since it too. Oh, thank you very yes. much. <laughs> I always note in my uh, WhatsApp status, Gambare bade kiru. <laughs> yes, I also belong to the Agriculture Machine Laboratory. Yeah. Oh, really? So my previous research is uh, tractors. Oh, really? wow. yes. <laughs> it's very good opportunity to have more collaboration in the future, Professor and Dr. Vestria. Yes. Okay, let me continue to the next uh, question. There is a question from uh, Professor, thank you very much for your answer. And then I'd like to continue to the next question from Mr. Aziz Firwan from Universitas Andalas that uh, questioning to uh, Dr. Desria. The question is, uh, let's wait. Every chain of ministry, uh, minister or government, there is a chain in policy. So what is the role of researcher to provide direction for agriculture development? So if the condition is like that, uh, Dr. Desria. 
okay. every change of minister or government, there is a change in policy. So what yeah. do you think? Yeah, I could uh, understand uh, clearly about <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. question. So it is happening actually in the political will of every uh, government that they will have the new uh, development uh, during their uh, government duration. So uh, in case of uh, our situation, we are academic uh, person, then we have to just uh, continue the one which is uh, we always uh, believe it is the best way to develop the agriculture uh, mechanization in Indonesia. Uh, of course, we just follow every government. Uh, we support their program. I think all government has also good uh, point of view of their uh, duration of governmental. Uh, so just uh, follow and support. So if we against, it means we do not uh, accept the development itself because the way of thinking of each government may be different, but their vision is same. They just want to improve our country to the better of agriculture. So keep working, keep making new innovation and support the government, especially support our farmer. That is, I think, the, the best way to do. Thank you. Okay, smart answer. Keep working. <laughs> Keep doing yeah. something, yeah, Dr. Lesria. Very good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, many other questions in the chat room now, but I'm thinking the time is limited. Uh, but uh, Dr. Jikhandra and Dr. Maki, because you are also in this room, uh, you can directly uh, open your microphone, please. So it will, uh, how say, it will reduce the time consuming. Please directly, Dr. Khandra, the chairman of our conference, uh, directly okay. to Dr. Professor Okaya, right? Thank you, uh, Dr. Heni. Uh, yes. Sensei, arigato gozaimasu for joining today for, uh, for our conference. My question uh, is, uh, is <laughs> oh, yeah, with my question is how to use the brick as indicator of refining processing using a sensor because the brick is a uh, brick is an, a destructive analysis. How to make a uh, how to catch the brick uh, as indicator of the ripening uh, process during the uh, uh, for your uh, reset and okay. for Dr. Desrial, I want to ask the uh, our government already give the money tool or machinery to our farmer, but sometimes we find that uh, the farmer didn't use this uh, tool because uh, of some problem such as the knowledge and uh, land, land of the farmer and also uh, uh, cost the, the machinery and how to change the mind of the, our farmer to move using the machinery to improve the quality of agriculture product in our country. Thank you, Dr. Henny. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Dr. Handra. So, because there are two, two questions to uh, Professor and to uh, Dr. Desria, I'd like to give the time to Professor first uh, for two questions from uh, Dr. Handra and Dr. Maki because Professor already have uh, a note in uh, his PPT. So, Professor Okayasu, uh, would you kindly yep. answer the question of uh, Dr. Handra and Dr. Maki as you saw before in your PowerPoint uh, share screen? Hmm. So, uh, I answer now or di uh, directly? Uh, directly now because after okay. that I will move to another. So, uh, yes, by please. using bricks matter. So, uh, I I want to apply the this method for farmers, not uh, research. So, in this case, uh, farmers do not uh, c cannot buy the fire uh, NIR sensor. This is very expensive. So, we use bricks matter. This is destructive analysis or this this this, this graph. This, this sorry, uh, this uh, measurement. So, okay. 
the BRICS uh, level or indicate index is uh, used for catching uh, information of the vegetative growth or uh, reproductive growth. So we want to check the uh, transfer uh, uh, transformation rate uh, or distribution rate of carbohydrate to a uh, uh, fruit part. If farmers want to keep uh, uh, sugar content inside the fruits, in that case, uh, the management uh, decision man making should be done in the uh, two weeks before of uh, uh, pro uh, production. So flower part, flower should be cut. So in that case, the keep the bricks inside the uh, sugar con uh, Sorry, okay, thank uh, you. survey, yeah. And how about uh, Dr. Maki question, Professor? Quite long question. <laughs> well, Maki, ah. Yeah. So please move next one. So I will consider. Okay. Yeah, answer. Okay. You, <laughs> okay. you need some time to answer. Okay, of course. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Desriel, please answer the Dr. Handra question about, uh, yeah, people already, uh, no, government giving some machinery to farmer, but farmer uh, cannot use it or not as we hope. So uh, uh, maybe you have some explanation about this. Dr. Desriel? Uh, yeah, your microphone, please. Your microphone, uh, unmute, please. Okay. So, Dr. Kandra and uh, Dr. Henny. So, yes. you are through that uh, we could also uh, find some agriculture machinery which is granted by the government to the farmer. It is not uh, being used uh, so far. So, but if we <clears throat> consider that our country is very huge uh, country, so the number of machinery which is uh, not appropriately distributed to the farmer, it is not the big portion, actually, maybe 5 to 10%. And it can be accepted due to the mis uh, perception yeah, of the strategy. So as I already mentioned you that the strategy, it should be selective and government also understand that this strategy is should be selective however in some cases that the local government they just uh, propose uh, some machinery to the uh, central government to the ministry of agriculture so in general so the directorate general uh, infrastructure they cannot differentiate uh, to whom this machinery should be given, but they only understand if the local government, they already made the request to the central government, then they just uh, distribute the machinery according to this request. But uh, some uh, farmer, they could not use this, this machine because of the soil condition or the literation level of the farmer. It is quite very low. So it, it's happened. It's happened. So we, we also realize this situation. However, as the agriculture engineer, especially the uh, Association of Agriculture Engineering in Indonesia, so this is, I think, our role, our duty to also support the government by our alumni or our lecturer in each area uh, to give the better information to the local government every year if they want to propose the agriculture machinery to the local, uh, to central government so uh, they also uh, need our suggestion. And for the machine which is already distributed to, to, to the farmer. So again, this is our social responsibility. I think as university uh, people, we are also having social responsibility. Then we go to the farmer and let them know how to use it. 
and let them uh, together with us utilize this machinery because actually this is also from from our money our tax which is uh, distributed again to the farmer so don't don't just uh, giving complain that this machine is not being used to the farmer but go directly to the farmer help them how to use it or modify if it is not fit with your location then this is our responsible to improve our mechanization in our country. So let us go together, Dr. Kandra, bring your student to your villages, help uh, the farmers. Uh, actually, in the uh, national level, we have some program. We call it uh, PKBM. So we already have five uh, demonstration uh, plot in Indonesia. So young uh, graduates from agriculture engineering uh, field of study, they go directly to the farmers. They keep in the farmer side for three months. They are supporting how to uh, operate the agriculture machinery. So this program was very successful. So in the previous seminar, I saw uh, that this collaboration between Indonesian Society of Agriculture Engineering and government quite giving very good result. So don't, don't uh, keep complaining, but keep working as Dr. Henny said. Oh, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dr. Uh, millennial generation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and thank Dr. you very Michael much, Dr. Besrin. A very nice answer yeah. because uh, we cannot stop working and collaborate maybe. Yeah? And yes. as you informed before in your presentation, local touching maybe. This is the part of answer for Dr. Kandra dealing with how to manage the farmer. Local touching, Dr. Kandra. <laughs> okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Dr. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, for Dr. Maki question, uh, Professor Okayasu already write down uh, in the chat, chat room, our chat room. And then, uh, uh, yeah, there are some uh, explanation there about tomato reset, yeah, uh, Professor? Uh, uh, after this uh, answering, do you st still need to add some more other uh, explanation uh, to Dr. Maki or not, Professor? What do you think? Enough? Uh, the explanation is enough for you or you need to add some more comment? Yeah, this is uh, for research use. Uh, so his comment for research use, this is one. But uh, for farmer's use, farmer use, uh, uh, how can I say, a solarization sensor uh, and the uh, uh, soil moisture content sensor to estimate the water requirements of plant. So at that time, so the sensor cost of uh, soil moisture content sensor is a little bit expensive. So uh, we want to replace the soil moisture content sensor to the other uh, sensor. So one of the uh, idea is the uh, image sensor is uh, good for catching information or plant information. So this is, approach is used for the high, uh, to produce a high quality, uh, no, sorry, high sugar content tomato. Japanese people like a high sugar content tomato. So water stress is very important to produce the such kind of tomato. Yeah. I see. Very interesting. And I guess uh, Dr. Maki need to contact uh, Dr. Okayasu for more explanation. Thank you yeah, very much, thank you very much Professor. Next, uh, let's move to uh, uh, Dr. Ras Dizdaini. There is a question for you from uh, Ms. Nur, Nur, Nur Izati, if I'm not wrong, because it is small. <laughs> and uh, the question is, uh, is there any potential to combine the methodology you have mentioned in presentation with some specialized machine or equipment? This is a question. Please, okay. uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Irene, and thank you, Izati, Nur Izati. I think yeah, this is Ibu Nur Izati. Uh, I think for the first question, uh, you, uh, so you talk, you ask uh, regarding, is it possible uh, to to use uh, any uh, implement or any uh, device uh, mm -hmm. in order to apply, right, uh, to control the pest uh, by using uh, method that I mentioned just now. So uh, actually that is, uh, we can use uh, 
uh, of course we can use the technology uh, to uh, to apply in the field uh, for in the in the big or in the uh, commercial scale so uh, we now currently we're talking about uh, agriculture ir uh, 4.0 we're talking about the revolution uh, so of course uh, because this is very uh, fundamental uh, study uh, how we want to control the pest uh, by triggering the plants to produce secondary metabol metabolites. So uh, after we getting uh, the signal pathway or uh, the compounds that trigger the plant chemical defense, then we can use the, the uh, technology, for example, uh, machine, and then the device attached with the device, for example, power sprayer, uh, or we can also use, for example, drone. Uh, uh, and then after that, we can apply uh, in the big scale. So as we know that drone, we can uh, speed up our works. Uh, we can uh, reduce the cost time. Then uh, we also can uh, increase the efficiency. Uh, so that is the first, uh, I think, uh, the best way, and of course, uh, I uh, agree with uh, uh, our two speakers, Prof. Takayashi, uh, Takashi, and Prof. Uh, Dr. Desio, uh, talking about the engineering, talking about the equipments, uh, then how we want to use and how uh, we want can be disseminate and distributing to the farmers. So, in this uh, era, for sure, to control pests. Uh, by using, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the potential uh, new technique uh, by triggering the plant's chemical defense. So we can use the uh, chemical, the extraction chemicals, uh, and then, uh, of course, we can apply uh, by using uh, uh, drone, for example, or any machine uh, device attached to the machine. Uh, that's for now. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, there is another additional question from Dr. Handra uh, during our pandemic COVID-19 condition. Is yeah. it uh, any uh, suggestion how to protect our plant related to this condition? Any any oh. special condition that we have to do? Yeah, okay. Thank from you, Dr. Handra. Dr. Handra. I think this is uh, very, uh, now this is a general issue. Uh, during pandemic COVID-19, it's very limited uh, to move uh, and of mm -hmm. course, uh, now people, uh, commonly farmers, use chemicals, heavily rely on chemicals. So uh, sometimes it's very difficult to get uh, the right uh, chemicals. And sometimes because of uh, uh, we use chemical frequently, uh, so we have another issue because uh, if we uh, rely on chemicals uh, solely, so of course, uh, first, we have uh, the problem in terms of uh, pollution and then uh, chemical residue in the food uh, as well as uh, we have a uh, human health issue. So in this era in COVID-19, we're talking about food security and how related to uh, what we call it crop rotation. So in this time, uh, we need to have very sustainable uh, method or technique to, con to control pest population. The first thing is uh, I think we must consider, uh, do not rely on the chemicals. Uh, heavy really, uh, do not rely heavily on chemicals. Yeah, you know why? Because number one, uh, because plants at certain stage, uh, they cannot tolerate with the chemicals. They are more susceptible to pests and disease. Secondly, uh, we're talking about uh, our healthy human, uh, human health because chemical residue is uh, one of the issue. So to protect uh, our food security, to make sure the quality and the quantity of the food produced, so we must make sure the sustainable method, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think this is highly potential in the future to use uh, to trigger plants itself. Because, uh, of course, in IPM also, Integrated Pest Management, we are not uh, uh, using only chemicals what we can choose or we can uh, have uh, three two. more types of uh, techniques okay we can choose okay. which one is the best okay doctor uh, dealing All with right. this 
this answer, uh, there is also another uh, question about uh, is it possible to detect disease and test insect in plant with an image processing uh, using hyperspectra, for example, there is a question about that. Okay, uh, I can say that this is a very good uh, idea because uh, I believe that mm -hmm. most of the university, most of the researchers, uh, uh, they combine the uh, expertise uh, in engineering and uh, entomologists uh, because I think this is uh, the easiest way how we can detect and precisely we can detect uh, pests and uh, the symptom of the pest. So this is, uh, of course, I can I cannot deny this is the, the future uh, to detect the pest by using the technology. Oh, I see. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ras Dizaini. Yeah. Uh, and I guess uh, we have already have a very interesting uh, discussion with three of our keynote speakers today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your participation and question, and also especially for three of our keynote speakers, Professor Takashi Okayasu, uh, Dr. Desrial, and Dr. Ras Dizaini from uh, Japan and from Indonesia and from Malaysia. Uh, your, how say, your effort for uh, with presentation, with answering the question is very valuable for our uh, activity today. I hope uh, all the people will have uh, success in the next activity and we can improve more network, collaboration and communication for the better humankind. Uh, I guess this is the, the end of our uh, part to have a presentation and discussion dealing with keynote speaker presentation in this conference. Uh, again, thank you very much for everyone. So I'm Kenny much. as moderator would like to say thank, thank you. you in the final time and then see you in the next occasion. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you.